So if you're suffering with shoulder pain, then today I wanna to talk to you about one of the key things we see that is a big, big problem with most people that are having shoulder issues in one way, shape or form. Um, and that is basically what we call scapular instability. And this is all about the movement patterns within the shoulder itself. So when we look at the shoulder as a complex, it's not a single individual structure, and it's not a single joint. The main reason for that is it's very, very hard to get 180 degrees of movement in every direction. So if we would have just a ball and a socket and we were to try and do that, what would eventually happen as we bring the arm up is that the arm would eventually hit the top of the socket and limit its movement. So the body has an amazing way to get around that and that is by using coupled motions. So what it basically does is we get initial movement with the arm itself and then we get a movement with the joint. So the way the body actually does is if we have a look at our uh, if we have a look at our complex here, our shoulder complex from behind. If we take this area here, what ends up happening is the shoulder is actually a complex series of joints. It's not just one joint. So we have a single joint that sits here, which is the one that we often dislocate when we're dislocating the shoulder, which comes in this area here. Then we have another joint over the top of it, and that allows for the collarbone to move across the top. And then we have another joint, which is our shoulder blade, which is this entire thing here, often called our scapula, as it meets the chest or the thoracic wall. And how we basically works is when we first initiate movement and our arm goes from this position out this way, it's just the arm itself that tends to move. So we just get this motion occurring. And then a really cool thing happens and that is that when we go from this area up to this area here, we now have part movement of the arm itself and we have part movement of the shoulder blade. And the main reason we have that part movement of the shoulder blade, so you imagine you've got a cup and your arm here. As the arm comes up, eventually what happens is the shoulder blade moving rotates the cup and allows the arm to move even further. So it's a really complex motion to get to even this point. But then to get from here, up into this vertical position, now we have another complex series of movements that needs to occur with the shoulder rotating, and we also need to pull this collarbone out of the way to allow it to get over that last bit of movement itself. So we have this really complicated movement where in step one, we first move our arm itself, Step two, we have this combined movement with the shoulder blade, and step three, we then have movement with the clavicle or the collarbone to get it out of the way. So it's a complex series of neurological actions because what needs to happen is initially, the shoulder blade needs to stay still and the arm needs to move. Then the muscles need to let the shoulder blade go and allow for movement of the shoulder blade. And then finally, we need to get pulling of the collarbone to give us space to get to the peak. So it's a series of complex neurological actions to fire muscles on and fire muscles off that creates and allows us to create movement um, all the way in all the different angles that we have within our shoulders and still keep a relatively good stability. So when we look at a person who comes up here who has their arm right up, really what we're now seeing is this shoulder blade sitting something like this down here. So we've got this big rotation that's occurred maybe more like that way. We've got this big rotation that's occurred and this lateral movement that's occurred in the, in the um, shoulder blade itself, which allows for this cup to open up and allows for our arm to get to those high areas. So the big key thing with this is scapular movement. It's the shoulder blade movement that is really, really critical. And the reason it is so critical is that if we don't have this firing sequence correctly, where the muscles are holding the shoulder blade still and then allowing it to give it the right time, the amount of movement we get with our shoulder blade becomes excessive. And as it becomes excessive, all those uh, key nerves that run through uh, this area here through the top of the shoulder blade into these muscles here from the front of the neck going through down here and even down into the uh, outer muscles such as the serratus anterior in the line 
all have the potential to get irritated as a result and further affect the muscular balance around the shoulder. So some of the key signs we see with people having problems with scapular instability problems is pain going down the front of the arm, especially so in that upper area here through what we call a long head of biceps, especially when they're going behind them this way or if they're reaching back, going to the back seat of the car. Uh, swimmers, when they're coming out to the front of their stroke, tennis players, as they hit their forehand through, these are all key times that we really notice when people have um, scapular instability problems. The other key one that we see as well with this is when people are laying on their side and the shoulder starts to hurt, um, or if they're um, waking up in the morning or even during the night and their hands are going numb or weak, uh, these can be other signs that we're having instability with this as well. And I'll talk to you about that a little bit more next week in one of the videos that I've got prepared for you. Uh, that I'll uh, set up for next week. So when we're looking at shoulder problems in general, this mechanism with what we call our scapulohumeral rhythm is key to maintaining good healthy function of the shoulder. When we're, this mechanism breaks down, we see a ton of different issues coming through. But the key ones we said before, are pain down the front of the shoulder, this is one big one, so let me just change my pen color here. Pain down the front of the shoulder, pain on the tip of the shoulder, on the, um, on the lateral aspect, numbness and weakness in the hands, and a general achiness right through. That can sometimes be unrelenting. That's exacerbated by reaching backwards, leaning, or laying on it. So there's some key things for you to look out with when it comes to um, uh, shoulder problems. Um, if you have any issues with it and you want some advice or anything, just send me a message. Always happy to help you guys. Uh, you guys know that already. Um, if we're having issues with laying down, there's another common one for us as well. So uh, if you have any of those issues, send me a message. Um, otherwise, remember guys, it's always about adding life to your years. And, uh, and we'll catch up in the next video. See you guys.